Welcome to Movies, Films, and Flicks. I am Mark Hoffmeyer, and I have the pride, the privilege, nay, the pleasure of introducing you to a podcaster sired by podcasters, a podcaster who can trace his lineage back beyond Charlemagne. I first met him atop a mountain near Jerusalem, praying to God, asking his forgiveness for the Saracen blood split by his sword. Next, he amazed me still further in Italy when he saved a fatherless beauty from a would-be ravishing of her dreadful Turkish uncle. In Greece, he spent a year in silence just to better understand the sound of a whisper. And so without further <laughs> gilding the lily and with no more ado, I give to you the seeker of serenity, the protector of Italian virginity, the enforcer of our Lord God, the one, the only, Sir James Gil Mula. <laughs> Mula. <laughs> Oh, I see. Now I'm just thinking about Watts' whole, like, pain. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. What a, what a great intro that is. Man, Paul Bettany just destroys it. Oh, he's <laughs> so good. And just right before we were recording, uh, my wife and I were listening to the commentary on this with the director, Brian Helgeland, and um, Paul Bettany. And, mm -hmm. it's, and it's very dry, and it's very funny. Uh, like they're talking about how like Thin Lizzy was the only song they got period correct because it was recorded in the 13th century, and I just love the jokes. Like Queen didn't happen in the 13th century. He's like, yeah, I, I I know it's 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 such a thing. Okay, I've I've always adored this movie. You've always adored this movie from what you've told me. Oh yeah. But I never sat in a theater and went Queen's playing. This movie sucks. Like, I don't, and that's a real thing, though, James. You read the reviews, and a lot of people can't get over this movie has modern day music. They that, say okay. things that aren't that's... modern. What, so I have a question. Oh. I guess I guess we got to respect that. Maybe that was a mistake of the director. But w w is it a case of maybe expectations hitting people hard? Because this is fifty nine percent of Rotten Tomatoes. I mean, audiences love it. But why why the initial like audiences loved it, dude? This made one hundred one what one eleven million worldwide one. One hundred eleven, one hundred eleven million dollars worldwide. So it made money, right? But it's so likable. It's so fun. It's so different. Why is that a hang up? Uh, why why it's a hang up? I think is is just a general case of there were a lot of period pieces going on at the time that were light hearted, but true sort of to the period, right? So you have, I mean, right Shakespeare before Shakespeare and love even, stuff like that, right? Right, right, and and even before that, you had like Robin Hood Men in Tight, right? the took itself seriously at least on like the, some of the medieval stuff but didn't go too zany here now you have a fusion of something that's like let's talk about music for a second right music transcends what it's it's if you like it if you groove to it if it's something that connects to you it doesn't matter what time it came from you know but but here it is queen my my rock god is brian may an astrophysicist living legend of rock and roll. So Queen comes into it in any movie, and I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, buddy. But then David Bowie? Come on. Like, you know, Golden Years comes in, and, and uh, I actually still have the DVD that I had of it, so it has like a 14-minute, the filming of A Knight's Tale. And uh, Shannon Sazamon and uh, Heath <laughs> Ledger, they were both excited to dance so much for that scene and they're both basically just riffing off each other like and then and then the music starts getting faster and people just start busting loose and then like you see you see Heath Ledger almost do that like spin kick jump thingy and you're like oh yeah there's there I, I think I think it's it's just made we were in, in deep freaking Highlander was still like a huge thing back here I, I think I think the joining of the Highlander universes came out around the same time that this movie came out so there was kind of like a, a yeah I, I think it threw people uncomfortably, but, like, the thing that makes people most uncomfortable, I think it's the greatest thing. You're watching a period piece, and the thing that connects to you most is music. So now it's in your frame of reference with these awesome legendary songs, and then, you know, you're watching this period piece, and it's like, well, maybe they weren't so different from us. Maybe music connected to them the same way it does to me yeah, right I, now. And that's a cool yeah. thread. Man. If we got in a time machine, you and I, like Bill and Ted, and we went to a jousting competition – these people aren't sitting in the stands silently. They're, they they want to watch people get their heads knocked off. I mean, this is people cheering in the stands. These are – there's adoring fans. There's probably oh, – yeah. I don't know. Whatever musical instruments were around at the time, they're playing them there. There's entertainment. There's probably, uh, you, you know, like a jester going around. There's probably some bowdy jokes, like some ale being passed around. It, it, obviously, Queen isn't playing. This is a, a sports atmosphere, I would say. So he just sort of modernized that. And if you think about it, right? All right, Last of the Mohicans. 
So that promontory, that got you jazzed. Like that gets you ready to pick somebody up, still, still. run up, run up a mountain, uh, fight West study study because you just want, still want to beat the living daylights out of them because of that role. But it's yeah. it, if you th- like, so the, the director Brian, he just wanted music that got people pumped up. He didn't want uh, you, know, you know period appropriate music at the time. Sure, uh, occasionally it's great, right? Think about Two Towers. Uh, think about uh, oh, you don't have to tell me. Yeah. This is but, this is my my study work jammy jammies. This, yeah. I listen to the, specifically a lot of fantasy film scores. So like I totally agree with and, you. And they're good, but they don't get you super jazzed and put you in that atmosphere. I feel like that's rare. Yeah. And so I, I mean I'm not saying there aren't good ones. You need a certain atmosphere to create. And he and the well, director the, did that. There's always like the one song on a soundtrack. The Return of the King has its like one awesome track of like we're charging into stuff, you know. But but you're I, I like your point here is that all the music here was made to pump you up in some way for some scene like not one song, the whole thing. Yeah, the boys are back in town. It's so literal. <laughs> And, it's just wonderful. And it, it, I just find it interesting that it is a major hang-up on people. And, and for me, so I, I watched this movie on a loop in, in college. Uh, I lived in a place called the Players Club. I went to Florida State. And uh, I was a sophomore in college. I had three other roommates, all different from you could possibly imagine. You know, I had, like, a, a weed dealer. I had a guy that, like, just worked out and did steroids all the, t- all the time. And, like, then I had another dude. Then across the hall, there was a bunch of weird people. Like, it was just it was the oddest collection of people you could ever meet. It was like our Korea crew. But we all would sit down and watch A Knight's Tale. <laughs> it was always on. Always it, on. And same, so, so, so same thing in Gainesville, right? Not too long, maybe overlapping time periods. Also, shout out to Hobbit's Hoagies. Yeah. One of the best places in the entire planet. They treated us well when we worked for Nintendo, and they kind of just let us take over their the, just delicious stuff. Anyway. Love Tallahassee, but I'm a Gainesville boy, man. UF all the way. But it was the same thing. We had, like, Magic Channel 8. It's a TV channel for the students that you just got if you lived on campus. And it was, like, for, like, two years, it was, like, coming on at 4 o'clock, Night's Tale. Coming on at 7.15, Night's Tale. You're like, wow, all the time. All the time. I mean, we watched Evolution and Night's Tale on a loop. It was evo- I-, I don't know why, but I'm telling you, every time someone came to the house and it was on, they just sat down and watched it with us. Sometimes we have six people. Like, everybody loves a scene in it. Like, I, you know, just re-watching it, and obviously I've seen it a bunch of times, but it's been a couple of years since since I had actually sat down and watched it front to back again. And uh, I'm sitting there saying the lines, and I'm like, but again, it's like a good song that you haven't heard in 10 years, but somehow you're still sitting there, and like, at least you're getting 80% until the point you're like, man, 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 man. Hey, now you're all oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go well, and play. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. But where were they going? <laughs> but it's always summer. Though. Nah. Yeah. It's. I know exactly what you're saying. And and we, hold this on, is, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. With one headlight. Oh, I can sing I, that I whole song. To, I I know, but yeah. you, that was the come on, try <laughs> a little. Oh my. Oh wait. Oh yeah. Fastball. Where were they going without ever knowing the way? That's, I love. There's some good driving songs in the '90s and leaving songs. Uh, oh, closing uh, time. Open Go roads. On. Oh, closing time. Open, open road, road song. Open road song was Eve Six. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Uh, Eagle Eye Cherry. Save tonight. He's leaving in the morning. Fastball. We're uh-huh. leaving. Wallflowers. We're driving. Uh, 1979. <laughs> uh, Interstate Love Song. Oh man, STP. Man, STP. Now there's there there it is. My all-time driving song is 1979 by. No, Smashing Pumpkins and Run by Snow Patrol. And I also like Chasing Ooh. Cars. Now, 1979 was the first song that I heard in my buddy's truck when he started driving. So, like, he got his license, he got his Ford Explorer, he came over to my house, picked me up, and the first song that he played was 1979. And I was like, yes, I will never. In my first song, the first time I got in a car to drive on my own, I drove up the block to <laughs> pick up my brother and sister from the bus stop. And I listened to Damn It 20 times on the way up, waiting for the bus, and on the way back, <laughs> yes. Day late a buck short. A day late a buck short. Oh, my God. So I'm I, writing the report. I'm losing and failing. failing. When I move, I'm flailing now. I turned that in as a poet, so I was a lit major, and I had a class, and <sighs> I used to be like a real pain in the ass. And they were no. like, they're like, submit a poem to our class, submit a poem. And I'm like, screw Chaucer, I'm doing Blink-182. And I defended it in front of the entire class. And their faces were very annoyed, but they kind of just went, yeah, it makes sense. So like, all right, we'll give it to you. 
And I got like a B plus on the assignment. So I convinced you know, everybody that it's 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 poetry. We're old. So no, well, I, I dual majored in political science and creative writing. Oh, nice. um, but I creative writing was my passion, but like I couldn't make money, but then I took all those classes, so like why the hell not finish it out, right? But in high school, what got me into writing was like, of course, like your first bad breakup. I was like, she left me. And I was cool for like those three requisite days of like, yeah, nothing you know, nothing nothing matters. I'm just you know, listen to every morning by Sugar Ray a hey, bunch hey, right hey, now. Hey, hey. <laughs> and uh you know, then then it hits you and you're like, Oh my god, all of a sudden I'm writing all this stuff. But I was really into uh No Use for a Name and Strung Out at the time. So like everything was like some punk lyric about like just getting your heart torn out and then like being okay with it. <laughs> like, oh, I love it. And uh that's that's what actually got me into writing, which is I've always fused music with other things. And this is again going back to the point about this movie in particular, this is what I think is so cool about it. Is that the music is intertwined with this stuff that maybe it shouldn't be. But what's what's wrong with like who doesn't go to a restaurant and have a new flavor and they're like wow what is this and they tell you what it is and you're like that's terrible but you just loved it like just admit that you love it some combinations are great and this is a great combination yeah they, it blends well and i i think one of the strengths of this movie i was reading this tour article that says it's the greatest medieval movie of all time and and this <laughs> is a it. person who who studies and uh teaches medieval lore and they just said they, they talked about how they instead of recreating it, they just kind of created the atmosphere that they thought might have been. And I thought that was really interesting. And, and I thought this beforehand, but they also said this is what I think is most important of this movie. And this tour article talks about it. And then I, I agree. But in the, when you first meet these three characters, you, you know them almost immediately and you know the vibe of the movie almost immediately. It's uh, there's very few movies that I can think of where you're on when it, when you're on like when you get its vibe almost immediately. And I think the Knight's Tale or a Knight's Tale comes fully fleshed on screen in those first five minutes between those three men talking about their knight being dead. You get the vibe of it. You get the dynamics between them, the cheeky humor, and then the music comes on and then the joust and his helmet is stuck on his head. So he can't, you know, lift it up to show who he is. And so they get their prize. It's just, it's, it, 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 I think it, it comes fully formed, and I think that is a big credit to the director, Brian uh, Helgeland, because, dude, he wrote Nightmare on Elm Street 3, the dream – no, 4, the Dream Master, Renny Harlan movie. He did Conspiracy Theory, Post Band, Mystic River, Legend with Tom Hardy, Man on Fire, L.A. Confidential, 42. So he, he directed this movie, but he's a writer's writer. I mean, this a writer mm-hmm. wrote it, and yeah. that's why Chaucer's in it, and that's the speeches, and – I, I don't know. I, I think they do a very good job of of you know the world almost immediately, and that's what I really love about it. It comes fully so, formed. Man, I've got so much to say about so many things. I just remind me Beowulf here for one second because I want to say that 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 the director and um, Paul Bettany are friends. Yeah. Or, and and so he wanted to write a role for him, and so he wrote Chaucer into the thing, and then Paul Bettany was like. You son of a gun. Yeah. He had to I'm naked, naked all the time. Yeah. And then Brian was like, yeah, you can do that though, right? And so, you know, and it's, but it delivers such a, such an, it's, 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 a, I can't, putting him in the movie is just, is just abs- like trudging is his first, that is just, that's the first thing I remembered about the movie. Like every time I think about like the first time I saw it, trudging, I just loved that scene. Um, but what I wanted to say about, about, um, Beowulf in particular, because this goes back to what you were saying about it, it being a great medieval movie, is that I took this great class. Um, it was Heroes and Villains, and it was like an old English class, too, at the same time. So, you know, we, we did like uh, Jonah and the Whale, and um, we talked about Lord of the Rings a little bit, but Beowulf was really the crux of most of what we did. For that final project that year, we had to translate out of the literal old English our own translation of, of a scene. And I did the Wiglaf scene when he goes and, and rushes in to help Beowulf, which is, which is great. 